Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11 and in the previous video I discovered that maybe I didn't have that much money after all considering the cost of upgrading the buildings so we need to do more contracts and the most interesting contracts seem to be around EVE we have this position of satellite and tundra orbit around EVE that we haven't done yet and also there is just this science day from space around EVE we might as well do that science day from space around Gilly we might as well do that and there's this Recover Module 6NLT8 from Orbit of EVE, which it's a light enough module, but it's physically large, right? 2.5 meters, and that seems a little bit big. Yeah, we'll need a fair-sized heat shield if we're going to recover it on Kerbin without damaging too much. A guarantee uh, recovery around uh, on Kerbin. So... Or we might build a shuttle, but we don't actually have all that technology yet. So, yeah, we'll see about this. We might as well pick it up. It's interesting. And we will time warp to the next EVE window. We'll just go ahead and go there. Uh, it's not giving me any Duna contracts, and EVE is the most interesting thing besides. So we might as well go with it. Okay, I think that's close enough to the EVE window right there. Okay, let's go for it. I think it'll be two missions, one for to position a satellite into that orbit, which will also handle the two science data missions, and then a separate one to recover the module. EVESAT 1 had not been horrible, we just need to make sure we have better comms. A big, big antenna. We got this big relay antenna, that might be helpful for other things. If we just put that on top, but of course that hurts our Delta V with this. How bad is it? Actually not that bad. Not as bad as I thought it would be. So that might be the best thing. We don't need the always open antenna in that case. Yeah, let's just go for it like that. And this needs Mystery Goo and Science Junior. We've got those. Let's pack two Mystery Goos just for balance sake. And I want the solar panels at a location that wouldn't be as affected by that dish. But we don't need that much solar panelry around Eve. Hopefully that'll be enough. As long as the orientation is right. Okay, well, it doesn't actually require a barometer and thermometer, and we sent those on the other mission. Let's leave those off for now. The thing is, this is probably not enough to get into that orbit, I don't think. This Oscar B had been in place for another reason. Well, this seems rather big for for our launcher. We might go with a slightly different setup after all. We're gonna make it like that, I think. Let's get that line in, pull this out a bit. 2,800, does that sound like enough? More importantly, can our launcher handle this? Okay, and it's cutting it close a bit on that, but should be okay. Clamshell deploy, might not be safe to be honest. Maybe if we have more sides, does that cost more money? No. Well, uh, let's give it a go. Hey, Eve's at two. Okay. Throttle up. Throttle up. SAS on. And launch. And off we go to Eve again. Okay, we're through the worst of it. Everything's been very stable. We seem to have plenty of Delta V. Okay, it's a little bit late, but fairing set. I wanted because uh, they're clamshell. I was a little bit, I was a little bit concerned about them colliding with things. Okay, that's a little bit high. We have a sat right up above us. They've actually sort of progressed, so now the two satellites here are communicating with each other too. So that's good. Eventually, they're gonna probably overlap each other. Yeah, we could have carried something a little bit heavier than this. We could have carried more Delta V in the in the probe. 
Okay, well, that'll be important information for the future. For now, separation. And it seems to be good and operational. And it's mostly an inclination deal. So we'll have another burn over here. The really good opportunities are when the inclination happens to the ascending or descending node happens to be right at where we're going to meet up with it. Then we don't have to do a mid course adjustment like this. Well, there's an encounter, but it's not exactly the best we can do. I think our burn timing is a little bit off. Okay, so that's that's a good transfer right there. In 27 minutes. And what we would like to do is hit the periapsis right there, if possible. Yeah, timing's a bit weird for hitting that periapsis. Might be better to capture high then. Last time we saw that capturing low doesn't have that much benefit when in certain cases when we have to get into this sort of orbit because the radial burn to change from an orbit that looks like this to an orbit that looks like that is going to be painful okay we don't need to do too much ahead of time though at least we have a plot to eve and then we can figure it out as we go along this is recharging okay and the stage, well, it can hang out for a bit. It's not going to lose charge. We'll do the transfer first. Well, it won't lose charge as long as we are out of render range. As long as we are in render range, though, it's going to lose charge. And we are remaining in render range. Well, anyway, I'll be fine. How's communication through the burn? Uh, yeah, we've got a satellite up there. All right, go. Are we passing by the booster again? Well, hopefully this will serve as a commsat around Eve. We should check out where that one component is. Okay, so let's say we do something like that, and we do something crazy over here. So we capture, but also we do a radial thing, which will cost a bit. But, you know, this is mainly what we're doing here. That's 760. We'll have that. We'll have that. What we're looking for is we don't want as much of a radial burn as trying to capture at the periapsis close to Eve would produce. So if we had the periapsis over here, and then we captured into Eve, the radial burn would be much higher. By going higher and then hitting here, the radial part is lower, but it's still hefty. If we take a look at the components here, we've got 607 radial and 456 retrograde. But it would be worse if we were closer to Eve because the cost of a radial burn close to Eve is higher. Okay. And we are going around the right way, it looks like. So the component, the module, is there. We have launched this. It's on its way to its mid-course adjustment. And what I want to do is bring the booster back. Yes, that's what I want to do. So let's try 27, no, maybe 26.5 or something. Okay, we are going through plasma. And we will lose communication. Yeah, I think we're going to be in the water. Yep. So a little bit too far this time. We have communication. I could, like, Get closer to the KSC with what I've got left. Okay, uh, recover before it flops. Okay, 16,000 funds returned. 
And we want to launch the other mission, the tougher mission really, to bring back that component. Okay, so first I want to make a guess as to what module it is, and maybe it's the cupola? The cupola is 0.8 tons. It's a little bit more than that, but it's about 0.8 tons. I think that's the best guess as to what we're trying to carry. And, well, I guess we don't have too much to do with that. We need the claw. We need, actually, let's start off with our little claw contraption. So we're going to have a heat shield like this. We're probably not going to need all the ablator. I'll just put half. The solar panels like this aren't going to work out quite right. So I'm going to hold off on that. So four baguettes like that. Hmm, doesn't leave us enough room for a whole bunch of stuff. So we got to put the inline battery back on again. We'll still need RCS. But hopefully not that much. Just enough to dock with it. I think it'd be better if I attach it to here and then pull them out like that. Ant engines, we actually do want them pointing out because we're gonna have the thing connect up there. So it makes sense for them to be pointing like this to avoid it. And we want the va vacuum delta V. That's enough to come back home. That would be enough to come back home. And thrust weight ratio is not horrible. Let's just have them bare. And I would like the bottom nozzle not to be pointed directly at the heat shield. So we'll point like that. And we still need solar panels. But this time we can put the solar panels. And then we, uh, we've got the inline battery, so that's fine. But this time we can put the solar panels on the baguettes. We'll need parachute. Parachutes. Um, this is 2.5 tons and we're going to have a 0.8 ton thing, but that's with all the fuel. Let's dump the fuel. In any case, I think it's going to be two radial parachutes. That looks okay to me. But the claw, let's see, arm. Okay, that's, should be, the, the little ant engines might be getting in the way a bit. So basically I'm looking for... Delta V to get back from this. We need some other stage to get it there, which means this is going to be pretty heavy. Everything is going to be pretty heavy. Um, I'm going to rotate these. There, that looks a little bit better. Okay, so that's our... Well, I'm going to call this Mini Claw Master. 5,000. No, uh, no 5,000. I think that might work. I mean, eh, it's tough to say. No, we don't have an antenna on here. Oops. We need at least two of these, judging from the previous time. Okay, what we're going to do is... I'm going to put the baguettes in pairs instead. And only one pair will have the solar panels and the thrusters. Okay, but we'll have another set of baguettes, but this time they'll have the antennae. We need to rotate those the other way around, and of course we'll just ha we'll have to close them in the atmosphere anyway, so the fact that they're not going to be properly heat shielded is sort of trivial. Clipping into the heat shield, there's a chance it'll explode. But it'll be functionally done with what we needed to do anyway. That's the hope. Okay, well that's a little package there. 2.8 tons. Uh, I hate clipping them in like this, but I hate having that frame outside too, so... It's, uh, wait, maybe this is a good time to use this decoupler. That makes me feel happier actually. That, that looks nice. I'm definitely liking that idea. I believe that should be enough to get us there. These thrusters, if we have to keep this stage on, these thrusters aren't going to be in the best location. But the question is, this is 
now seven tons, basically. How are we going to launch it? Maybe the Phoenix with some boosters. Yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of Delta V. It can even get off the ground right now. The clamshell fairings were a little bit close last time. I think I'll... Leave it like that. Without it being clamshell. Thumpers? You suppose four thumpers will be enough? I'll of course light the core at the same time, but... Because otherwise we won't have control. We still haven't gotten the conformal nose cones yet. But the thrust weight ratio is pretty high. Uh, maybe we can reserve... Some... They could probably stand without the launch clamps now with these boosters on. Well, let's disarm the advanced grabbing unit and try it and we'll find out if I'm missing something or not. Okay, well, um, the mod propellant is there for a reason. All right, now throttle up, SAS is on, and actually we want to not throttle up that much. Let's throttle up uh, halfway. I hope that gives us enough control. Okay, go. Ooh, some recoil on the boosters there. I mean, mostly the Phoenix launcher is very well controlled, but now we've got these boosters and we are lowering the core thrust. Okay, throttle up and separate. Ooh, nearly got us there, nearly got us. We are past the speed of sound. Okay, I think that part is okay now. The question is whether we have enough Delta V to get there. Wow, that fairing is wiggling all over the place. Uh, Delta V to get to orbit and, and then bring this back down. I think it's okay, but we'll see. Got this big fairing doing a lot of wiggling and giving us some extra drag too. Since I retained the confetti fairings, maybe we'll try a fairing separation relatively early at 45 kilometers and see how it goes. And fairing set. Well, that was non-volatile. Yep, looking very good. We might not have needed four boosters. Okay, that's a 100 kilometer periapsis. And I'm gonna extend the antennae now since we're in space. Okay, that's about 100 kilometers. Alright, that's the staging I want. So, separation. Yeah, we can use some RCS to puff us forward a bit. Not gonna be a problem. Okay, let us plot for Eve. Okay, that should do, and then we'll have a uh, make course adjustment as usual. Just get it in line with the previous mission. That'll be simplest. Oh, there's a moon encounter. Great. <laughs> Just great. Ah, look at it gracefully turn the way it ought to turn. That's good. I hate when they turn really aggressively those OP reaction wheels. Okay, and go. There goes the booster flying by again. We are on escape. I don't think I have to chase that. You just need to make sure that we hit Eve's orbit properly. And do the mid-course adjustment. We've got a uh, Minmus encounter. Wait, it was a Minmus encounter? Crazy. Well, at least it doesn't change our orbit very much. Okay, so taking a look at our approach at Eve after we do the mid-course adjustment. We just need to get to this guy here. And... 
It's not saying which direction it's going in, but that's only a 23 degree difference, so it must be okay. All right, so if we interact with it like that and go directly into orbit, again, judging from the previous mission to EVE, orbit effect isn't the hugest thing. I'm going to have a retrograde sort of situation here. We don't really want to get into exactly the same orbit immediately because we have to rendezvous with it too. That's 660 meters per second. And this is... Okay, that might be too expensive though. Maybe getting closer will help. Let's see. Uh, the uh, Oh, we can do the inclination change higher up. Hold on. Uh, we can do a loose capture. So let's say we bring it down after that. What's this burn? 267. So that's 690, but it gets us to the same orbit. It's tight. It's tight. But maybe it's doable. Anyway. We'll leave it at that, make course adjustment, and then we'll figure it out from there. There is some delta V in the RCS as well. All right, but this is what we'll go with for now, and it's all plotted. So those are two missions to the tracking station. Now, the reason why I might want Kerbal Alarm Clock is so that we don't have to go to the tracking station and see where when the maneuvers are. I know somebody said, oh, well, you can just go to the tracking station and see when the maneuvers are and keep track of it like that. Yeah, but sometimes... A, uh, not all the things I want to do are just maneuvers. They could be SOI changes and stuff like that. That's why Curve Alarm Clock is nice sometimes. You can put arbitrary clocks, which you can't do like this. Oh, so transfer windows that we might miss otherwise. Uh, I feel like we lost something. Wait a second. We have EVESAT. Did did we crash into Minmus? I think we crashed into Minmus. Um, do we have enough time to relaunch that? Stupid Minmus killed our probe. I think we can launch another one. Is it? It's not debris, is it? Nope, it's not even debris. Hmm. Okay. This is distressing. I think we can finagle another launch. Given the Delta V's and the fact that we seem to have a lot... Uh, speaking of the stage, we haven't actually brought that back down. That's the mini Claw Master probe here. Let's go ahead and bring that back down. It looks like we lost the other probe though. I think it crashed into Minmus, but I'm not sure. I don't know if there's a log of stuff like that. Almost forgot about this guy. But yeah, I think since we have 900 meters per second here, we can add a little bit more fuel to the terrier stage on the probe. I think we'll go with the same height actually, just about, since we're lower. It should mean that we get onto land. We were pretty close last time. Shifting fuel down. Getting the gear out. I think we're overshooting by quite a lot, actually. I think the burn point was different. It was in the dark, so I couldn't really judge. Yeah, the KSC's over here. So, we're way off. Oh, I kept time warp on for too long, but alright. Recovering vessel, it worked. I really blame the game for killing that thing. We checked the periapsis around Minmus. I didn't actually change the periapsis around Minmus, and I went to the tracking station to time warp. I didn't time warp in map view. Maybe I should have just followed it through. But yeah, I had Minmus kill it, but we saw that it was a thousand two hundred kilometers away from Minmus. <sighs> anyway, we get to improve upon this as a result. I'm going to... I wonder if we could put a whole one of those tanks. Let's see. So... It's reading... Let's go with vacuum. 
So that's 4,073 in the launcher. What, what if we could put one of these tanks on? That'd be nice. Looks nice. That doesn't seem especially less down here, actually. Maybe this isn't too much. Yeah, I guess it's not that much. Hmm. We want to sneak uh, another one of these tanks in? Even then, the Delta V reading it shows here is pretty good. But we're diminishing the thrust... Well, that's a pretty high thrust weight ratio. We are diminishing the thrust to weight ratio down here, so we have to think about that. And now we're poking out of the fairing, so we're going to have to adjust that. I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to... Oh, we don't even have the tank butt. I was going to remove the tank butt. We don't have that. All right, so we're going to have to edit the fairing. Okay, we'll see. Maybe it can deal with all that extra fuel. And in that case, we've got more to work with for the transfer. Um, anything else I wanted to change about this? Maybe a little bit less RCS fuel here. We are just trying to, like, dock with the thing. Okay, well, it's daylight. I don't know if it's we're anywhere near the optimal transfer time anymore. We've time warped a few days. But SAS on, throttle is up, and, and actually we want half throttle, and launch. Very frisky. I can sort of improve upon my trajectory this time, having seen what it did last time. I could turn down the boosters a bit. They're a little bit past optimal. I think 1.7 thrust weight ratio would be best. Okay, separation. Ooh. Really close on that separation. But this seems pretty good so far, though. Okay, fairing set. Yeah, we have plenty of Delta V still. And that's a hundred kilometers. Should be close enough to space to be able to extend these. That's a little bit higher than before, but it'll be fine. Separation and ignition of the terrier. And it'll puff with the RCS. Okay, well, now we've got a little bit more Delta V and everything. Let's see about the EVE transfer. It's no longer optimal, but maybe it's doable. Okay, actually that's pretty good. This might be a better situation than before. I I think we don't even need the mid-course adjustment with this if we do this right. Though we might want to make course adjustment to get into the particular orbit of our target. So, communication check. Seems fine, we've got a satellite overhead. One, and go. Lots of baguettes. Lots and lots of baguettes. Can you tell what my favorite tank is? Okay, 0, 0.0. Going straight out like that. And we have an encounter. I don't know if a little trivial burn might help a little bit. Uh, well, that's about it. Okay, so mid-course adjustment. Not really mid-course, this is at the ascending node. But maybe that's okay. Mid-course adjust- sometimes it's not good to have it at the ascending node, and instead you might want it at the actual midpoint. But I think this is definitely a inclination thing. Oh, that's not doing what I wanted to do. <laughs> Hmm, maybe this is not what I thought it was. So instead of actually changing inclination here, what's helping is a combination of radial and prograde. So I think this is one of those cases where the mid-course adjustment is, the actual mid-course is better. See, this time the 
normal burn really, really is bringing it down. And it's cheaper. So even though it's not the ascending or descending node. But this steep relationship to the target is not great. But that's a side effect of the fact that we're getting a cheaper make course adjustment. We gotta pay for that when we get there. <laughs> but if we capture it very loosely, maybe it'll be all right. We actually want to go to the other side. So that adjustment is 139. This capture is, wow, 700, that was more than before, huh? I wonder why that's that much. Let me see the details of that maneuver. That's maneuver two. It is mostly, I guess we're meeting up with Eve at an oblique location instead of the Holman transfer location. But we still, I think, have enough. Yeah, we will have enough, at least as far as I could tell. So this sequence of maneuvers will do. And it is on its way. Let's go to the tracking station. Let's see, first of all, focus on this. Does it have a weird encounter? No, it just straight to escape. Let's go to the tracking station and pay attention to everything. We'll bring down the booster in a sec. Let me just make sure these are on their way out. So Mini Claw Master and EVESAT2. EVESAT2 has already escaped. Okay, this one's out. All right, let's bring back the launcher. And I think I'll conclude the episode with this. And we'll see what happens with the Eve, Eve probes in the next video, because this is getting pretty long. And I expect that their shenanigans at Eve will take some time too. Maybe I should put something on the Eastern Peninsula so that I have a reference point. Or maybe a reference point at the ground where, well, I had said the Woomerang launch site was pretty close. So we'll just go with the Woomerang launch site from here on. So this is where we'll start turning for our retro. We're pretty high, 105 kilometers. So I'm going to go to 25 on the periapsis. Oh, it's, it's really not holding retrograde. Oh, I forgot to shift the fuel down. Oh, great. Well, we're gonna test some heat tolerances here. If I get communication back, but by that time we'll be through the plasma. Jeez, is nothing susceptible to heat? <laughs> well, we're probably gonna land short because we're presenting a huge profile. And we're creating a lot of drag. Oh, just as I said, it's nothing susceptible to heat. Some things decide to be susceptible to heat. Yeah, I expect we'll be landing even short of the mountains this time. It's like the polar opposite from what happened last time. But... Well, we'll see. I mean, the parach parachutes will reorient it properly in the end. Okay, we have comms. I might as well shift the fuel down now. That'll help with balance. Oh, I lost comms anyway. Forget it. Forget I said anything. Now straight up and down. Now with the fuel at the top, will it will be all right or are we going to have problems? Pretty flat ground it seems compared to some of the things we've landed on before. Okay, success and recover. All right, so there we have it, 91.8% uh, value returned, and we'll see how our EVE probes do in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.